Dr. Sage back with the fourth and final video in the series discussing the cell cycle and mitosis. In this video, we're going to talk about how the cell regulates the cell cycle because you do need to be able to regulate your cell cycle because you need the ability to make new cells whenever you need new cells. But you also want to make sure you're not making cells when you don't need those cells. For example, there are times where there will be some cells that are just constantly dividing, dividing over and over and over and over again, dividing even when they should not be dividing. Cells that never stop dividing. What those are is cancer cells. One way to try to prevent a cell from becoming a cancer cell is to make sure you're regulating that cell cycle, only allowing it to divide when it should be dividing. It turns out that inside cells are chemical signals that tell the cell what stage of the cell cycle they should be at. Like, should they be in G1? Or should they be going through S phase? Should they be going through mitosis? And different types of cells divide at different rates. Okay, so let's get into some of those details. So this is a figure of the cell cycle that we've seen before. So the cell cycle, remember, is made up of inner phase, which is G1, S, and G2, and then M phase, which is mitosis and cytokinesis. Okay, and you start with one cell, you go through inner phase, mitosis, cytokinesis, you end up with two cells. Okay, that would be one round of the cell cycle, and that's how you get new cells. But it turns out there are places in the cell cycle called checkpoints. There's a checkpoint in G1, there's a checkpoint between G2 and mitosis, and there's a checkpoint in the middle of mitosis. What a checkpoint is, is the cell is going through the cell cycle until it reaches a checkpoint. And the checkpoint says, stop, do not go on don't proceed to the next part of the cell cycle you're not ready to go there yet so it's basically a checkpoint saying stop don't move forward okay and it will stop at that checkpoint until the cell receives a signal that tells it okay go ahead and pass that checkpoint now we'll get to the signals in a little bit but there are checkpoints there are three checkpoints it turns out the main checkpoint is the g1 checkpoint usually if a cell goes ahead and passes the g1 checkpoint Usually, it will then go through and finish the rest of the cell cycle, usually past these other checkpoints. So if that's the case, if the G1 checkpoint is the main checkpoint, then what is the point in these other two checkpoints? The purpose of those other two checkpoints is to make sure a mistake didn't happen, that there's not a problem. And I'll give you an example of a problem in a few minutes, okay? But for now, G1 is the main checkpoint, but each of these checkpoints say, stop, do not proceed, don't go on to the next part of the cell cycle. Now, there is actually another part of the cell cycle that I haven't discussed yet. Okay, if you're in G1 for a long time, like an indefinite G1, then the cell is said to exit the cell cycle and go into what's called G0 phase. G0 is just like a long term, like an indefinite G1. You can remember, G1 is where your cells spend most of their lives. That's where your cells do all their normal metabolic functions. Use their DNA to make mRNA, to make proteins. They live their daily lives in G1. Okay, well, the only time a cell is not in G1 is when it's going through the cell cycle, when it has decided to divide. Well, your cells divide at different rates. Like skin cells, you're losing them every day, so they divide fairly quickly. But your neurons very rarely divide. Okay, so they might stay in G1 for like a decade. So if that's the case, it's said to exit G1 and go into G0 phase. So like your neurons are in G0 phase right now. But what allows a cell to actually pass this checkpoint? to proceed to the next part of the cell cycle. Well, it turns out there are two proteins that work together called cyclin and cyclin-dependent kinase, or CDK for short. So the first thing to note about CDK, cyclin-dependent kinase, is it's a kinase, which means an enzyme that adds a phosphate to something, that depends on cyclin. In other words, this will not work without this. Okay, CDK needs cyclin to be able to function. So CDK is always inside your cells. So CDK is like always present, always there inside your cells. But its natural default state is to be switched off, to be turned off. It's inactive, it can't do anything. Well, what turns CDK on, what switches that protein on is cyclin. When cyclin binds to CDK, that turns CDK on, and that allows a cell to pass the checkpoint. Okay, so when cyclin binds to CDK, 
it switches CDK on and allows the cell to pass a checkpoint. Now, as soon as you pass that checkpoint, the cell immediately degrades or destroys cyclin. It gets rid of it because you don't want cyclin hanging around inside your cells. Because if cyclin is hanging around inside your cells, what's going to happen is the cells are going to just keep going through the cell cycle over and over and over again. You don't want that because what is that? That's a cancer cell, a cell that is constantly going through cell division. Okay, so CDK is always inside your cells, but it's turned off. Cyclin is not always inside your cells. Your cell, when it receives a signal that tells it, all right, you should be dividing, you should be going through the cell cycle, when it receives that signal that we'll discuss in a minute, the cell then builds cyclin. So cyclin is not always inside your cells. In fact, you don't have any cyclin inside your cells, and then your cell decides to pass a checkpoint and it makes a bunch of cyclin. And then you destroy it as soon as you pass that checkpoint, so you don't have any cyclin again. And then you're ready to pass the next checkpoint, you make cyclin again. And then you pass the checkpoint, you destroy it, so you don't have any cyclin again. So what happens is the cyclin concentration or levels go up and down with the cell cycle. And that's actually why it's called cyclin, because its concentration goes up and down with the cell cycle. Uh, another detail. When cyclin, when this cyclin is bound to the CDK, it's called MPF, which stands for maturation promoting factor. That's just the two when they're together. Okay, and that's how the cell actually passes the checkpoints with cyclins and CDKs. But what tells the cell to make cyclin? Well, it turns out there can be either internal or external signals that tell the cell you should be making cyclin. So an internal signal is when the cell is telling itself, all right, I need to make cycling because I need to pass a checkpoint, or I shouldn't be making cycling because I should not be passing this checkpoint yet. An example is an internal signal. Recall during mitosis, we just learned about recently, the chromosomes line up down the middle of the cell from the centrosomes on the two opposite sides of the cell. Microtubules are gonna grow and attach to the kinetic core proteins on the centromeres of the chromosomes. Then these microtubules are going to take those sister chromatids, pull them apart, and move the daughter chromosomes to two opposite sides of the cell. Okay, well an example of a signal that tells the cell, all right, you should not be making cycling because there's a problem, is if the kinetic core microtubules are not attached to kinetic core proteins. Okay, in other words, if it is not actually attached to the chromosomes yet, well then you shouldn't be proceeding with the cell cycle. You're not ready to start anaphase yet. So that's an example of the signal during mitosis to check whether or not the microtubules are attached to the kinetic core proteins. So that's the cell telling itself whether or not to make cycling. But you can also have one cell tell a different cell, all right, you should be dividing, so you need to make cycling. They use something called a growth factor. So a growth factor is a chemical signal that causes growth. So it's a factor that causes growth, and others it causes cells to start dividing. An example of a growth factor, let's say you get a cut in your skin. Your skin is your protective barrier, protects you from the environment. That cut is an open wound in that protective barrier. Okay, you don't want an open wound in your protective barrier. So let's say you get a cut, basically the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to start bleeding, but you're not going to bleed out and die from like a simple paper cut. Why? Because inside your blood you have things called platelets. The platelets accumulate in the cut and they clot your blood. You know, as they prevent you from continuing to bleed. They prevent you from bleeding out and dying from a paper cut. But that's not the only thing that platelets do. The platelets that are accumulated in the cut, they also are releasing a growth factor, which tells the cells around the platelets, all right, you need to make cyclin because you need to divide. In other words, the platelets in the cut are telling the skin cells surrounding the cut you need to make cyclin because you need to divide because we need to grow over and heal this cut. So that's an example of a growth factor. That one in particular is called platelet-derived growth factor because it's made by platelets. Cancer cells do not respond normally to the body's control mechanisms. Cancer cells may not need growth factors to grow and divide for several different reasons. One, they might make their own growth factor. In other words, they're telling themselves to divide even when they should not be telling themselves to divide or they might convey a growth factor signal without the presence of a growth factor. In other words, they think they're being told to divide even when they're not being told to divide. Or they may have an abnormal cell cycle control system. For an example of that, okay, recall that we all have CDK inside our cells. It's always there, that protein. 
How do we know how to make this CDK? Well, we have a gene, a piece of DNA that tells you how to build a CDK protein. Okay, but CDK is always inside your cells, but it's switched off, can't do anything. But let's say that somebody gets a mutation, a change to their DNA, and DNA does get mutated. We'll learn how that can happen in a later chapter. But let's say they happen to have a mutation to the gene that codes for the CDK protein. And that mutation causes CDK, instead of being always turned off, it causes CDK to be always turned on. In that case, it doesn't matter if cyclin's not there. If CDK is always turned on, the cell will never stop going through the cell cycle. It will be constantly dividing. So that's an example of a problem with the cell cycle control system that could lead to a cell becoming a cancer cell. Now, a normal cell is converted into a cancer cell by a process called transformation. Cancer cells are not eliminated by the immune system. And let me pause for a second because that's kind of an interesting point. We actually get cancer cells a lot more often than we realize, but what should happen is our immune system should detect them as a cancer cell and get rid of them. But our immune system isn't perfect, so once in a while it misses them. Okay, in that case, they can form tumors, which are masses of abnormal cells within otherwise normal tissue. If abnormal cells remain at the original site, the lump is called a benign tumor. Malignant tumors invade surrounding tissues and can metastasize, which means they export cancer cells to other parts of the body. Now, in regards to this course and cancer, honestly, in my opinion, I do not think that cancer is a bio one level topic. It's a complicated topic. Why? Because there's lots of different ways that cells can become cancer cells. There's lots of different systems involved in learning about cancer cells. For example, that cell cycle control system. As an example of it being a very difficult topic, there's been many brilliant people researching cancer for decades, spending millions of dollars on it, and we don't have a cure for cancer yet. It is not an easy topic. I personally do not believe it's bio one level material. I think that's for a higher level course. Your textbook has a whole section of the chapter on cancer. So if you're curious about it, read that section of the chapter. We are not going to go into all those details. Any details you need to know about cancer is basically what's in these last couple lecture slides. Essentially, cancer cells are cells that never stop dividing. They keep dividing even when they should not be dividing. For example, when cells start to get too crowded, growing too close to each other, they should tell each other to stop dividing, but cancer cells don't. They just keep dividing. Okay, but for much greater details about that, take a higher level biology course. So that concludes our lecture on the cell cycle and mitosis. In the next set of video lectures, we're gonna learn about meiosis, which is the type of cell division for the gametes, the reproductive cells. Until then, this has been Dr. Sage.